Hey everyone, it's Wynn. It's 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, and uh, I hope uh, that everyone's been okay the last few hours. I've been trying very hard to stay on top of everything on Facebook with your comments and questions, and uh, <clears throat> do keep them coming, but as I said in the post on Facebook, please do them in the open forum somewhere. Um, and if I miss your comment in the open forum, feel free to hit me again. Uh, with it. It's, uh, I really want to answer everyone's questions here as we all have a lot of friends and family in this race and uh, want to understand what's going on and I really enjoy answering all of your questions. So let's please uh, let's please keep it going. Um, so we had a very interesting couple of hours, right? Uh, I think probably everyone saw that we had the racing fleet start and then they got out to about Waukegan-ish and a severe thunderstorm came rolling through at that time and great, great, great job by the National Weather Service in Chicago. Um, whom we've uh, been in contact with, actually, um, in setting a warning out right on our racing fleet, just so the uh, racers were completely aware that there was a severe cell coming through. Uh, we saw a gust at the Chicago crib to 33 knots. We had one of our racers report 28 knots. When the storm was over land, it had a 29 knot gust. So somewhere around 30 knots, I'm guessing, is what the racers saw, um, which is not nothing but it's not you know 40 50 60 not super severe stuff so um i'm very very grateful for that i've got the tracker up for the racing fleet here and i'm gonna run with the uh what's going on with them so right our slower fleets fleet start first our larger fleets catch them and then right the storm happens and people just kind of work their way along so let me slow that down a little again and do that again so let's back it up to about the start so you guys can learn how to use the tracker from what i'm doing here too right I'm going a little slower now. There goes our slow boats. And they're starting at 10 minute intervals here. And you can see them spread out to the left of the alarm line as we talked about earlier with their spinnakers up. The wind starts to die a little bit as the storm approaches. And you see people just start going left and right and front and back there as the storm approaches. The winds got very, very confused uh, before the storm. Uh, a little bit during the storm, and then definitely after the storm, I was watching um, Arete right here, which is a super duper, super fast foiling uh, trimaran, and it uh, it really can go frighteningly fast. I mean, I think we're probably going to see that tomorrow at some point. And they were down to one, two, three, four knots, suggesting the wind really almost fully becalmed the fleet, and that's why we saw sort of you know some boats were. Uh, pointing this away, some boats are pointing that away, some boats are pointing that away after the race because it just completely died. Um, I'm sorry, not after the race, after the storm. Uh, now, you know, that's not super fast for Arate, actually. And Il Mostro, the uh, Volvo 70, is the other sort of boat you judge us by. 9.5 knots, well, it's pretty good. You know, um, I've seen this boat uh, in moderate conditions in Mac, uh, in Mac races past doing 13 knots. So I think we'll see some higher uh, boat speeds from these boats later on. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about individual fleets when we don't have kind of this big clump um, going on here. It's a little bit easier to talk about the uh, cup division and the trophy division or individual sections uh, as the day wears on tomorrow and maybe as we get through some of this weather. So speaking of weather, I just want to uh, show you a quick, and let me just go ahead and refresh this, um, a quick loop of the uh, radar. The, this is from the Milwaukee office. And uh, these are our really down here are really bad storms that kind of went through and hit the fleet and they're moved off to the east right now. They've actually weakened just a little bit. You can tell from the reflectivity. I'm going to hit the refresh button here, so bear with me. And what we're looking at now, actually, this looked a lot worse an hour or so ago. So you see this red line right here. That's what we call uh, kind of a Boeing segment here, um, B-O-W-I-N-G. And even here at the end, it gets a little bit of a rotation going on and uh, what's called a bookend vortex, which is a sign of really, really, really severe weather. Um, it doesn't seem to be sustaining itself. We're still under that same severe thunderstorm watch in this whole area. Um, but we're not looking at the really harsh reflectivity that we had a little while ago. We're looking at more kind of a couple of smaller cells, if you zoom in a little bit, all right? A couple of little smaller remaining cells. Remember the, the racing fleet's right here. Um, and I'm not seeing uh, maybe a, a gust front, which is where the outflow from the storm is racing ahead of it. Um, but I'm not seeing the really big heavy red reflectivity with... We had some hail go on earlier <laughs> earlier on inshore here. So I think we got rain coming for the remainder of the night tonight, um, or at least for the next several hours. I'm not sure that we have severe storms. There is a cold front farther back, um, and the cold front is actually back in Minnesota right now. Uh, a lot of people think that storms come with fronts. They usually come ahead of fronts. This one's going along the warm front, um, and it is... Uh, 
uh, going to be replaced by a cold front coming through that we forecast yesterday and we'll look again tomorrow. Um, but I, you know, I think we're just going to have some rainy weather, rainy kind of cruddy kind of weather for the rest of the night. And we'll keep an eye and see whether anything new forms. So let me go back to the tracker real quick and let's talk about our cruising fleet, uh, fleet friends. And again, bear with me as things redraw here. So as a reminder, I go to teams, I click off of racing, I click on cruising, and I can just kind of drag down here. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing with the cruising fleet that I did with the racing fleet, the poor, poor cruising fleet, my God. Um, so I'm gonna back up maybe, let's see, that's this morning. You can see the time on the, the top of the bar there. Let's go to back to last night at about this time-ish. So everyone was kind of on the state line more or less, just a little, a little later than now, but on the state line, maybe a little bit back from the state line. Um, so I, actually, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the ruler and I'm gonna sort of put one end of the ruler right there, okay? Which is sort of where the fleet was last night at this time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play it and I want you to watch. Remember we said it was a thermal last night and we thought the thermal might die out. And when you see people start going across the lake crazy like that or making hard right turns or left turns, suggest that winds are lightening a little bit and they're searching for wind. Some of the big boats seem to stay in wind for a little while here. Now we're at five o'clock this morning. You see the smaller boats start lagging a little bit as they tend to do. And now the bigger boats begin to slow down. And the smaller boats, see the big right turn happening here? You may have been reading my tweets and Facebook posts all day long, but the, the Mid Lake Buoy, which is right here, I don't think reported anything higher than 3.9 knots all day long. And these boats basically came to a stop. I mean, you see some of them look like they're going backwards practically. Um, now, late at night, all of a sudden you see them accelerate and start heading north. Either when the storms came through, and I pointed those out also to you guys um, earlier. So we had uh, sort of non-severe thunderstorms approaching from the Wisconsin co coast. Either when those came through, the wind filled in a little bit, or those have passed and we're into sort of a, a more gradient wind field here, which is gonna be a south something wind field. So our leaders are up here off of Big Sable Point. If you saw my video on the landmarks of the race, that's why I talk about Big Sable Point. Um, the rest of the fleet is fly finally moving. And you guys may remember the racing fleet is like right here. So we're going to have our racing fleet catching um, most of our, uh, the back of our cruising fleet um, in, a, uh, in a pretty short time. Now, let me clear this and let me go back. So if I sort of take an average position of the cruising fleet at the end of the day today, so 24 hours later, this ruler device tells me that they went 48 miles in 24 hours. So 24 hours, 48 miles, I'm no mathematician, but that means that the average speed of that group of boats was about two knots for the entire day, which, wow, wow, you, what a struggle of a day. Two knots up the course is really, really something. So, um, you know, I think, well, let's get this next round of rain through. Let's keep an eye on the next cold front. I think tomorrow's gonna be a way better day in terms of consistent breezes, maybe even big breezes, uh, hoping. Cold front should come through sometime at the end of the day tomorrow. We'll look at the weather charts tomorrow morning. And, um, you know, we'll have our first finishers hopefully late night tomorrow night um, if all goes according to plan. Maybe even sooner if uh, a couple of these big cruising boats can make it to the island sort of midday tomorrow. But there's a, there's a way to go right now. Thank you guys for everything. Uh, sorry it took me a little while to get this video out, but it's been a very busy evening. And please, please, please keep the post uh, questions, comments, everything coming. Uh, I enjoy it immensely. Thanks. Bye.